This is Talk of the Town, a weekly program featuring community events happening in and around Northeast Michigan with your host, Nancy Smitham, and get the latest from Alpena Community College with Dr. Don McMaster. And now, today's Talk of the Town. Good morning and welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Nancy Smitham. My first two guests today are both from the Zonta Clubs of Alpena. I have Ann Weir from Zonta Club of Alpena Tri-County and Diane O'Connor who is from the Alpena Zonta Club, excuse me, the Zonta Club of Alpena. Welcome ladies. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Thanks for being here and Diane because your event is coming up first mm -hmm. I want to start with you the annual um, Zonta Walks for Women. Mm -hmm. Just an amazing event. I was going to say I love looking every year to see the pink t-shirts walking down the street, but this year they'll be a little more colorful. Yes, this year we went with a 60s theme, so we have a tie-dyed t-shirts that I think are our best yet. We, ha they're, we are enjoying wearing them. They're very nice, and mm -hmm. over the years you folks have raised some substantial amount of money. Yes, uh, this is our 12th annual walk. And in the previous 11 years, we've raised about $200,000 That's at this amazing. event. And I think the most wonderful thing about it is all that money stays in our community to support uh, women in their diagnostic procedures and in their post-surgical needs that they have. Wonderful. And how do you get the referrals for the people who need this money? Well, we can get them from the referrals from the hospital or from the health department. Okay. Sometimes Friends Together refers individuals for the, um, the monies that we have donated from our walk. And you know, a, a cancer diagnosis is devastating for you and your family, your mm -hmm. loved ones, your support system. And I'm so glad that Zonta is there to walk by the side of the women diagnosed. And men get diagnosed mm -hmm. with breast cancer too. Exactly. Of those people who are diagnosed and know that there's help out there. And obviously by the numbers that you raise, it's something very important to our community. Yes. All right. And then Ann, you are um, Zonta Club of Alpena Tri-County. Yes. And this year's honorary chairperson is Joanne Kamishia. Yes. Joanne is a very dear friend of mine. She's a wonderful person. She is. Absolutely. And, and, um, you know, going through that diagnosis with her and her family and through her treatment and everything um, it was a little too close for comfort for me, but, you know, we, we did what we had to do and we got her through it. She's a wonderful woman and I'm so glad she's in your club. Oh, and, she's amazing. And being amazing. supported by, you know, the Zonta Club of Alpena, too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely. And today you want to talk about your fundraiser you're having, which Zonta um, does amazing fundraisers, and you're having a charity auction. Yes, on October 13th at Art in the Loft, we'll be having a charity auction and chair, C H A I R. And what we've done is uh, we have a member of our group, Barb Rigg, who was in Tray Club, and we've kind of picked up that chair auction that they did with the decorated chairs. Um, it's going to be at Art and Loft, I, as I said, on October 13th. And we have had businesses from around the community take chairs, decorate them. They have them in their businesses around town. Um, and if I could yes, say please. where people could see them, you can go to As You Wish, Blue Phoenix Books, Boldry, Sunchuck, Rulo, and Williams, CPAs, Larry's Collision, Thunder Bay Chiropractic Center, McLaren Hospice and Home Care, Bay Athletic Club, Wolverine State Credit Union, Mangoes, The Front Porch, and Sweet Salon Spa had two salons in there, uh, Cindy Straley from True Salon and Megan Matuzic of M3 Salon also did chairs. And these are beautiful chairs. I've seen some and of the pictures on Facebook, yes, amazing. Just amazing chairs, mm -hmm. the work that went into these things. And is there still time for people to get a chair? Um, there is still time if you would like to decorate a chair, absolutely get in touch with, with me. You can call me at 4640668 or get in touch with any um, person in Santa and let them know, hey, I want to do a chair to donate. Okay, and back to you, Diane. And so yes. your event is Saturday, October 6th. Give me all the registration information. Okay, if you would like to register online, you can go to our website. And all you have to do is type in uh, Zonta Club Walk for Women and our website should come up. You can register online, you can donate online, okay. or we also have, um, you can go to Thunder Bay Accounting. They have paper registration forms if you prefer to do it that way. Also, you can register the day of the event. You don't need to do that ahead of time. And we're going to be at the um, Thunder Bay Marine Sanctuary. Okay. And doors open at 8 o'clock, so you can register anywhere from 8 o'clock till 9.30 if you're okay. a runner. The 5K okay. run starts at 9.30, and then the walk starts at 9, or I mean, I'm sorry, at 10. Okay, 
and um, plenty of time to get in there, register, get yes. one of those really cool t-shirts. Yes. Now I can imagine the, imagine the logistics of setting up an event that size mm -hmm. is pretty pretty big. So how are you getting everything set up and getting that all done? Well, I'm glad you asked and I'm very proud to say I am an instructor, nursing instructor at the college and I'm taking 25 of our nursing students with me from the Student Nurses Association and they make this event happen. I'm going to be perfectly honest about that. They set up for us, they run the events, they help tear everything down, pack everything up, and they love the day. So, Well, it's a wonderful event to be part of. Yes. Okay, and back to Zanta Club of Alpena, Tri-County, and what do the proceeds of this event go to do? The proceeds stay local in okay. our community, and some of the things that we've done, and I, I do have a list because I don't want to leave anything out. Perfect. But we're involved with Girls on the Run. Um, Zanta says no to violence against women. Uh, we do have uh, sexual harassment and rape prevention, um, self-defense that okay. we have partnered with Michael Brooks, who's in law enforcement, okay. and he presents that for us. Uh, Hope, Shows Hope Shores Alliance. Uh, we do Alpena Community College scholarships, literacy projects, Mid-Michigan Health Center has been a um, okay. benefactor for us, and Inland Lake Seas, Shelter Inc., and just a host of local programs. And if anybody's interested in coming, okay. um, they can get in touch with any Zanchin. They can go to Neiman's Wolverine State Credit Union and get tickets. Um, it, o doors open at 5 o'clock, and they can come in, bid on chairs, and uh, have a wonderful time. Sounds like it's going to be a great evening. Yes. And back to your event, how many people yes. are you anticipating are going to be there? We typically have between three and 400 people come. I know, like I said, it's amazing when you see the shirts walking down the sidewalk. And it, um, what I always like is whether I'm walking or not, I've always participated in one way or another. And just having that t-shirt and wearing it around town for a year until the next event makes me proud to have been a part of such a wonderful project. And one other thing we've added a okay. couple of years ago is bras across the bridge. Okay. So we have um, um, individuals or companies or groups decorating bras. Okay. Which are going to be displayed on the bridge, the bridge behind Noah. Okay. And then people can vote on their favorite one. And the bra that wins, that group will win a booby prize. Okay, perfect. <laughs> perfect. Yes. And of course, that just adds to the funding that we generate through this walk. Okay, so once again, register online. And mm -hmm. for you, we can go to Neiman's Wolverine State Credit Union or get tickets from any Zanshin for your event, which is October 13th. Yes, and also Boldry, Senchak, Rulo, and Williams has tickets. Okay. Well, thank both of you very much, and thank please you. go back and thank your respective clubs for all the wonderful work that Zanshins do in our community, making it a better place for all of us. And thank you thank for you. having us. Thank you. I'll be right back with some information from here on Humane Society following these messages. Hi, welcome back. I'm with Kinsey Wright, who is the Assistant Manager at Here on Humane Society here in Alpena. Hi, Kinsey. Hi, Nancy. You brought a beautiful guest with you today. Tell I us did. about your guest. This is Rosie. She's a four-year-old purebred German Shepherd. Oh, she's a good girl. She is. She's a little nervous about her TV debut, but she's doing really good. And she's just adorable. She loves everybody, but there are some certain specifications for adopting yep. her. We're being uh, picky about the house that we home her to. She needs to go to a home where there's no cats or other small dogs. So ideally, she'd be the only pet, possibly another large dog if the meet and greet goes well. But other than that, she is extremely well behaved. She's really smart. She's well trained. She's great on a leash. She loves fetch. She's oh. so good at it. And she's beautiful. She's gorgeous. So we need to get her for her forever home. So if yes, someone is do. interested, they can contact here on Humane Society. And she's already spayed. Yep, spayed, up to date on her vaccines, rabies, ready to go. You just come out and meet her, fill out an application. If you have if you have another large dog, bring bring your dog out to, to meet her as well. Okay. She's a, she's a special girl. And I know that you just held an event recently and that went very well? Yes, uh, we had the PetSmart event in Gaylord actually where 11 animals were adopted out that weekend. Wow, they were, Nine amazing. of them were ours. There were three counties participating, um, Sheboygan and Owasso. And we adopted out nine of the 11, two dogs and seven cats. Amazing, yeah, good it was for great. you. It's a good weekend. A good day, I wouldn't mind working every Saturday if we could do that, huh? Right. Okay, now I know I saw on Facebook today that there's a Bissell event coming yep. up. Tell me about that. It's October 6th. It's the Empty the Shelter event where Bissell pays for all the adoption fees. 
Um, we're really pushing for pre-approval for adoption, so if there's a specific cat or dog that you're really interested in, we can pre-approve your adoption and then come in on October 6th and adopt them that day. Okay, but so the adoption fees paid for, all the animals will be microchipped, they're all up to date on vaccines. Amazing. And yeah, they're good to go. So get there and look around and um, pick out your favorite animal, which is very mm -hmm. difficult to do. I yeah, told is. you I don't like to go there because they all say, pick me, pick me. So I don't really go there. But now there's another reason to go out to the Humane Society because of Retail's Boutique. Retail's. We just had the grand opening a couple weeks ago, which went very well. It's doing awesome at the shelter. And we're also at the farmer's market now yes. every week. Last week was our first week there, and it was great. It was a great turnout. Well, and the oh, items that you it. have are unique items, and they're um, really good. Um, gift items and gift ideas and some yes. unique pieces that you're not going to find anywhere else. We have antiques, we have um, like we have coffee, we have coffee mugs that are just so cute. They're and so repurposed cute. items. Yep, uh, we have pet supplies, collars, toys, cat beds. We, ha we have a huge variety of stuff. We really encourage people to come out and check it out and all the, all the proceeds go to our shelter and go directly to, to this space here. Okay, and so what are your hours now? Uh, we're open uh, Tuesday through Sunday, 11 to 6 p.m. Okay. And we're there on Mondays, too, but we're, that's the only day we're closed to the public. Okay. And then, um, you know, as the weather's starting to get colder, Kinsey, people need to kind of make a winter plan for their pets. Yes. If, um, if your pets are outside often, make sure they have a shelter to go into. Make sure they always have water, heated water especially. Um, if they need coats get them coats. We sell coats at retails. Yay. And if you're cold, your dog's probably cold. So, you know, outside for 10 minutes, that's enough time for them. Okay, so get a plan in place. Yes. Okay. And what about volunteers? Are you still looking for volunteers at the shelter? Absolutely. We're always taking volunteers. Um, we do the volunteer orientation. It's the third Saturday of every month at 2 p.m. where we do, we go over safety procedures, cleaning procedures, just the basic stuff to get people going. But we are always, always looking for volunteers. And if anyone has any items that they would like to donate, what kind of items do you use at the shelter? Uh, well, right now we need towels. Okay. We need canned cat food. We need grain-free cat and dog food. Okay. Basically, we take all kinds of items, dog toys, dog treats, blankets. Um, bleach. Laundry soap, yes. bleach, fabric softener, fabric softener mm -hmm. sheets. Um, if you have some good tie down things, if you have some good leashes, if you have some good beds that are in really good condition, all those kind of things you use. We will take all of it and we use all of it. Right. And if anyone has just an hour a week, you know, come and walk it, uh, play with a cat, socialize them, or walk a dog. They need it. Oh, Rosie, you want someone to come walk you? That's what Rosie's yeah. saying. Pick me, pick me. I can hear her from here. Every, you know, even if you can spend a 20 minutes, half an hour in the cat room petting the cats, like that, that does so much for them. Oh, it does. They, they need the attention and they love it. They eat it up. And the great. foster program is another great way. Yes, um, we foster out a lot of um, mom cats with their kittens. We like to get them out of the shelter just so we don't stress the moms out. We foster out dogs when they are stressed out being in the kennels. And we love our fosters. We really appreciate new ones. We have a foster application. If anybody's interested, they can come fill out at the shelter. Well, it's a good chance for you to learn about an animal, too, what mm -hmm. their habits are, what their good ones are, their bad ones are, everything that they do. and Or if you're interested in an animal and you are thinking about adopting mm -hmm. but not sure if it will work out, you can absolutely foster a cat for, you know, two or three weeks to see how, how it fits into your family. Yes, exactly. Okay, and oh, your hours, again, one more time. 11 to 6, Tuesday through Sunday. And if you want to come by and see Rosie... Come see Rosie and give her her forever home. She's absolutely beautiful and a great dog. She's amazing. Okay, and your phone number, Kinsey? 356-4794. Well, thank you so much for being here. And tell everyone, thank you so much for taking great care of the animals in our community. I will. Thanks for having me, thank Nancy. You. It's so much fun. Please stay tuned for Dr. Don McMaster following these messages. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to Talk of the Town. I'm Dr. Don McMaster. I'm president of Alpena Community College, and I'm pleased to have as our guest this morning Tim Kuhnlein, ACC Social Sciences History Instructor um, and, and the driver behind a very neat community accomplishment. So, and this would be the stone sculpture, I'm calling it, hopefully, That's right. accurately. History of Industry Stone Sculpture. Yes. So that was unveiled last, last Friday, Friday, right? and it was attended by many, many people. 
Um, tell us your thoughts on seeing on, on it finally you know coming to fruition. It was your vision. Well right? a lot of people were involved mm -hmm. and um, without all of those people and the companies and the nonprofits and the government agencies it wouldn't have happened. But um, we managed to get six sculptures um, founded on um, some pretty significant limestone um, uh, foundations uh, actually placed. So six sculptures um, in a year's time of planning and that's on top of two sculptures last year. We're really reviving the sculpture component of the Alpina Bypath and it's kind of fun to see it come to, to uh, fruition. You had a, uh, a very windy <laughs> yes, it was day. a day, a comedy of errors throughout the day. Um, sprinklers were going off when they weren't <laughs> intended to, and uh, the wind blowing, And but we had a great time. It actually made it uh, more enjoyable, I think. Yes. Well, the uh, it's difficult to really uh, boil down into a single line or two the effect of the stone sculpture, but I find it uh, terrifically inspiring and evocative. I think what makes it worthwhile um, when you engage in these projects is to know that people actually take advantage of it. And I've been hearing already within a week's time, and even before they were officially dedicated, that people are actually stopping and looking. Um, just yesterday I had a call. Just needed you to know some people are on their bikes and they actually stopped and they were reading the interpretive signage. And it just makes it feel like it was all worth the effort because it really is relaying an important message about our community. It was a result of community effort. I just hope that um, we can encourage people to take advantage of it, not just in a casual, passive way, but um, it has so much opportunity for educational purposes, both at higher ed level, um, applying to a lot of our programs from welding to uh, geology and geography um, and astronomy, but also history and art. But um, hopefully the secondary and um, um, elementary levels can see an opportunity to do a field trip and, mm -hmm. and visit and learn about the, the, the important thing about the whole um, story is how we manage as humans to um, transition from one period of history to the next, utilizing the resources that we have to make life viable for ourselves. And I think that's the, really the undercutting value of the, the whole interpretive sculptural series is that we, we see, particularly manifested through someone like Jesse Besser, um, how creativity and innovation can transition us from, say, the logging industry into the concrete technologies industries. And we have to start asking ourselves, what's the future hold for us? And who's going to lead those transitions? What will those outcomes be? Um, because life doesn't remain static. No, no, it doesn't. Economies don't either. Right. So the premise behind the stones is that each captures a kind of an era or an epoch in Alpina history. Right, and we tried to touch on some of the past and some of the present um, with the idea that it would inspire people to start thinking about the future. Um, not that these other things disappear. What, one of the interesting things is to see the convergence of how Native Americans relied on foraging just as much as the European settlers. And we see that crossover, for example, with the importance of fisheries, farming, hunting. Um, but obviously the modern industrial uh, uh, history takes us in a different direction with lumber, limestone, and, and all of the additional um, industries that branch off from, from limestone as a raw product. The artwork that attaches to, this, to the stones, or in some cases, exist alongside or nearby is just phenomenal. Yeah, it was really fun trying to find artists because it's not an easy thing to do. There are lots of great artists in our region, um, but to be able to produce something that can withhold the elements year oh, round yeah. for years is not an easy thing to do. But we managed to pull some things together, some really great work, um, and it's very different. All, each piece is really unique um, and symbolizes more than just what meets the eye. I also appreciated very much the signage that's out by the road that describes, the, you know, the thought process, the execution of it. Who did that? Well, um, myself and a lot of editors, um, um, we really wanted this to be a, um, an educational endeavor. And while we want to encourage people to interpret for themselves, sometimes the real deeper meaning gets lost. And I think these, these signs help help people understand what the intention was and they, encourage them to think above and beyond. They do, very much so. You got some folks you want to thank? Oh gosh, there are so many. <laughs> um, I, I'd say check out the signs because they detail 
you know, companies and um, leaders of those companies and nonprofits and government agencies, but also the people who did the work. Mm -hmm. I mean, this was really a sort of an elevation of labor and the people who, everyone who makes makes this all happen. Um, and, um, you know, but there are just so many of the funders uh, with the Alpena County Park Youth and Recreation, City of Alpena, the Besser Foundation, uh, many, many companies in the various industries related to what we were doing, obviously Carmoose, Oak City, and of course um, Alpena Community College and, and uh, the Thunder Bay Arts Council, just a lot of players that were working very, very cooperatively. Well, we've got about uh, 45 seconds left. I'm, uh, uh, you have had a wonderful run here over the last 13 months of, yeah. of uh, bringing art to yeah. our campus and the community. Yeah. Yeah, do you have, do you have what's a vision of what's next? Well, that? we do, and perhaps you've heard of Art Vision Alpina. I've been working yes. with Augie Matuzic and a number of other people on an advisory committee as an, a, an extension of the Thunder Bay Arts Council effort to continue this. And we've got a vision for a 12-year plan of um, about 10 more sculptures. Um, how this will play out, we'll, we'll see, but we're already in motion. Um, and you'll probably see some things happening very quickly here again. Wonderful. Well, I, I thank you and commend you. The globe on our campus is just uh, amazing. That's I love fun. it every morning. And now the stone sculpture yeah. is wonderful, too. So thank you, Tim, for thank what you. you've done. And thank you, folks, for watching Talk of the Town. We'll see you again next week. This has been Talk of the Town with your host, Nancy Smitham and Dr. Don McMaster. For a list of community events taking place in Northeast Michigan, please visit our website at wbkb11.com and click on our community link. This has been a Thunder Bay Broadcasting Corporation production.